Oh, hi there. Have you ever tried drilling a hole using your lathe's tailstock and the hole on the entry side of your blank is perfectly centered but on the exit side you find the hole off center? Or you try to drill a one inch size hole using a one inch Forstner drill bit and it turns out to be an inch and a sixteenth or more. Hi, I'm Ted Sokolowski. I've run into these problems many times while making my salt and pepper mills. So let me show you how to maintain your tailstock to help you accurately drill holes on your lathe. Now, I drill lots of holes on the lathe to make these mills. These holes have to be straight and accurate or the pepper mill won't work. So how do you know if your lathe is drilling accurate holes? Simply try this test. First, drill a hole. Start by cleaning up the surface with a skew chisel. Then put a starter hole in with the tip of the skew. Make sure the quill lock is snug but not tight. This is too loose. Tighten it up and then back it off an eighth of a turn. While drilling, hold the Jacobs chuck securely so it doesn't pop out of its Morse taper. Lock your tailstock in place and slowly advance the quill. Then using a one inch Forstner bit, I'll plunge in about an inch and a half deep. Then take the bit you just used out of the Jacobs chuck and insert it into the hole you just drilled. If it's snug, you may not need to watch any further. But if there's a lot of lateral movement, keep watching. I'll show you how to troubleshoot and fix some common and some not so common problems that can cause sloppy holes. I know of quite a few issues that can affect drilling accuracy. So let's get started with the first issue. Keep drilling implements sharp, dull drill bits smoke and tend to wander and veer off course, especially twist drill bits and brad point bits. It's also a heavier burden on the tailstock and increases wear and tear on the internal parts. You can sharpen plain Forstner or even carbide Forstner bits by hand using a diamond file. I'll put a link in the description below for this set. You can also resharpen twist drill bits by using a jig called the Drill Doctor. The chuck is the key to a successful grind. Just insert the bit into the chuck and snug it up loosely. The alignment port and the alignment button take care of all the relief angles and depth settings. The drill stop and the bit clamp arms line up the bit perfectly every time. Finally, tightening up the chuck will lead to a successful grind. After a few turns of the chuck in the drill doctor, you have a sharp bit and you can also put a split point tip on the end. When you can't see reflected light along this edge, you know you have a sharp bit. The Drill Doctor is a great little tool for resurrecting dull bits, but brad point bits need replacing. Either way, keep the bits sharp and you'll be rewarded with accurate holes. Ignoring this maintenance task will lead to sloppy hole issue number two. 
The second issue is to maintain your quill. Lack of maintenance can lead to the quill threads being misshapen, warped, or bent. Take apart your quill regularly to check and maintain the threads on the quill screw. Visually check for misshapen threads. The screw on the left has been abused and needs replacing, while the screw on the right has been well maintained. Look closely and you'll notice all the threads are rounded over. If the quill screw looks questionable, it's likely you'll have a mirror image on the inside of the quill. This creates a loose quill advancement that can wander while drilling holes. To prevent this from happening, clean and grease the threads often. I clean the threads and change the grease after every 20 Cocobolo mills or after every 40 cherry mills. With spalted maple, it may be 50 mils or more. The idea is, the more dense the wood, the more often you should change the grease. Ignoring this maintenance task leads to sloppy hole issue number three. Maintain the quill pin guide slot. This slot should be greased as well. Otherwise, the slot wears and creates for a sloppy drilling action. A newer quill pin slot has hardly any movement. You'll notice I've machined a new guide pin slot to add a bit more life to this quill. You may also want to check the diameter of the pin. That may need replacing as well. So in order to maintain the quill, Using a soft cloth, I like to clean all the threads of old grease and sawdust. And while cleaning, make sure you don't lose this key. That lines up with the hand wheel. This key allows you to retract and advance the quill when it's mounted in the tailstock. And don't forget to clean behind the pin because grease and sawdust will have a tendency to build. For lubrication, I like to use Super Lube, only because it comes in a tube and it's convenient to use. But truly, any grease will work. I usually spread a liberal coat of grease over the threads on the screw, as well as the internal threads on the quill, and then distribute the grease into the threads. You'll want to avoid getting grease inside the Morse taper. Now is a good time to add some grease to the guide pin slot and distribute that out as well. Wipe up any excess grease not in the channel and then just reassemble. Don't forget it's a left hand thread so screw it in counterclockwise. If you notice a buildup of grease at the base of the quill where the screw enters, wipe off the excess grease. Since adding grease, I've never had to machine a new guide pin slot, purchase a new screw, or even replace the quill. And as a side note, I wish that lathe manufacturers would create some sort of grease chamber or oil bath in the tailstock to prevent this from happening. The fourth issue to troubleshoot is the tailstock headstock lineup. Check and make sure the centers line up, tip to tip. First bring in the tailstock. Crank out the quill about a half inch or so, making sure the tail center's Morse taper is making good contact with the quill. When the centers meet, lock the tailstock into position. If the centers don't line up tip to tip from a side view, up and down, the ways of the bed may be worn, the tailstock is worn, or if your lathe has a rotating headstock, that might be the problem. 
These issues are beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, a more common problem is that the centers don't line up side to side from a top view, and minor discrepancies can be fixed. As woodworkers, we know if we dimple wood, say with a punch, it compresses the wood fibers into a hole. But when doing the same with steel and punching it, it mushrooms, proud of the surface around it. You can see the mushroom adding a bit more thickness to this area of the steel. This is an advantage. We can take up the slack or slop of the tailstock and realign the centers once again. My tail center is pointing slightly to the right when viewed from above. So I'll need to make the adjustment at the bottom of the tailstock. The dimple will be applied to both sides on the male portion of the base. I want my tail center to move left. So by punching the base here and here, it will essentially turn the center to the left. And the opposite is true if I punch here and here. It will turn the center to the right. And just to be clear, this is the surface I'll be dimpling. Usually one or two punches is adequate to take up any excess slack and line up the centers. After dimpling both corners, test fit the tailstock in the ways of the lathe. That fits just right. If you punch too aggressively and the tailstock doesn't fit, you can always grind the dimple down using a grindstone mounted in a rotary tool to fine tune the fit. It's a temporary fix because the dimple can wear over time. But it's a cheap and simple fix that works. I check all of my lathes annually for trueness and rarely have to dimple the tailstock. If you've done all the above and still have issues drilling a straight hole, inspect your Jacob's chuck. This leads us to the fifth issue. Maintain your Jacob's chuck. Sawdust buildup inside the jaws of the chuck can throw off your accuracy by allowing the bit to be tightened askew. Whenever changing your bit, always tap out the debris and sawdust that has a tendency to build inside and around the jaws of the chuck. Sawdust buildup like this can play havoc with accuracy. And finally, don't assume your Jacob's chuck is running true. Somebody before you could have dropped it. A bent drill chuck arbor can cause a lot of grief. So test them occasionally for trueness, because you won't even notice it when it's mounted in the tailstock. So mount it in the headstock and test for trueness, either by rotating it under power or lining it up with a mounted brad point bit opposite a dead center in the tailstock. In many cases, you can replace just the drill chuck arbor. A common Jacobs chuck taper is a JT6. This mates as a friction fit with the Jacobs chuck. The opposite end on this arbor features a Morse Taper 3. You can also get an arbor in a Morse Taper 2. Just obtain the appropriate replacement to fit your lathe. These are the drilling issues that have plagued me over the years when hogging out grinders on the lathe. I hope this helps you to troubleshoot your lathe and essentially helps you to make a better product. If you've run into different lathe drilling problems on your own and have solved them, post them down below. I'm sure others would be interested in them as well. And if you've enjoyed this video, 
make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you'll know when I produce more valuable tips for your home workshop. Also, check out some of my other helpful DVDs on my website at sokolowskistudios.com. Thanks for watching.